Hi, this is uh, Professor Nick Sensky from UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is the first tutorial in uh, Python scripting for Rhinoceros uh, for my uh, Spring 2014 scripting class. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up the um, Python editor, and it's very important that you have uh, Rhinoceros 5 uh, in order to do this. Um, it's the version that, that begins to incorporate Python um, as the scripting engine. Um, we're going to focus on Python because it's a really like diverse language um, that is used in a lot of programs, um, a lot of industries. It's a really, uh, it's a really nice looking, uh, easy to use programming language in general. So um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started with Python, and to do that, we're going to go and do edit Python script in our Rhinoceros uh, window. That will call up the Rhino Python editor, which looks like this. Okay. And I'm just going to briefly kind of take you through some of the syntax of uh, Python with that, which actually is is pretty easy compared to a lot of other languages. Um, it uh, really strips away a lot of the cruft, and uh, it's pretty easy to use. So, for example, let's just implement some variables really quickly, and that's actually pretty easy too. In other languages, you might have to do something like um, you know variable uh, integer x equals you know ten or something like that. So you'd have to say that it has a variable and that it's an integer and then you start to declare it. But you don't have to do that in Python. In Python you could just say x equals 10 and the the Python interpreter understands that that's a variable and understands that in this case it's an integer. If you want to do a float which is a um, um, a variable that has um, a decimal point you could do something like uh, you know, equals 15.5, and that instantly types that uh, y variable as a float. The same with uh, a string. You could uh, take a string and uh, put in quotes, you know, hi there, and that's going to recognize that as a string. Okay, so Python is really, like, flexible in that. The other thing you might notice is that I didn't put a semicolon in there at the end of the line or a parentheses or anything to denote when the end of a statement is. The end of a statement is simply the end of a line, so when I hit enter, and I make a new line, um, Python recognizes that that's the end of a statement. Um, the way that Python does, uh, figures out the scope of something, which might be your next question, is simply through like indentation. But we won't be doing that uh, in, in this tutorial. But just in case you were curious about how they get around that lack of punctuation, uh, they pretty much use like line returns uh, and uh, tabbed white space. So it's pretty, pretty nice uh, language here. So we can do operations like um, uh, z equals x plus y, uh, print you know, z, and print, you know, command is going to return z, and then when you're ready to run a statement, you can uh, click on the little playhead here, and that's going to return 25.5, because I asked it to print z, and 10 plus 15.5 is 25.5, so it's actually pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, okay, so again, the way that variables, you know, work is basically that you just state a name for a variable. Um, it is case sensitive, so, you know, X, you know, capital X, would be different than lowercase X. So it should throw, yeah, 26.5. Okay, so uh, punctuation is important, uh, capitalization is important when you're declaring variables, but it's a really, you know, really takes a lot of the, um, the mess out of the syntax there. Um, so um, you know that's that's the basics uh, for for variables, and I and I want to if you haven't done much scripting, you haven't done much programming. I want to talk about a couple of quick things with variables. Uh, certainly, you know, math is a way to create a relationship between one variable and another. For instance, you know, we added these two values, you know, uh, you know, like to each other. Um, we might have a variable that is a constant, you know, that, that doesn't change, and we might have a variable that, that changes, and by adding the two together, we get a new quantity out of that relationship. You know, other things you could do, you know, certainly, you can subtract, you can multiply. Those are all different kinds of relations, uh, different kinds of, like, relationships. Depending upon how the variables change, um, they can be, like, a dependency or um, an independency, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but... Um, these quantities, you know, represent, you know, like, uh, it's, it's a way of giving a name to a number. And so when you're doing that, you want to be really careful about how you name it. So I might actually call this, um, you know, my height, you know, or uh, column height, 
you don't typically want to use kind of anonymous variables. Okay, you want to typically give them um, verbose names. Okay. Another thing you can do is talk about the kind of variable. So you could say this is my string, since that's going to be a string. And a string is basically uh, words. And if we put them in quotations, uh, we can record words. There are lots of other variable types which we'll, we'll talk about today. But the important thing is that basically, if you give something a name and you have an equal sign in some kind of statement, whatever type that that statement produces, whether it's a number or whether it's an object, gets cast into that variable. So it's very useful for us. Okay. All right. We're we'll going to kill this right now. So that's kind of the end of you know understanding variables in uh, in you know like Python. Uh, this doesn't really do much for us until we actually get into some Rhino objects. But in order to do that, we have to import the rhinoceros libraries into our Python script. And uh, we do that by basically, at the beginning of any uh, Rhino Python script, we do import. And then this little handy uh, box pops up. We can do Rhino script syntax. OK, a little context here. This is a really nice IDE. Um, import Rhino script syntax as. And the convention in Rhino scripting is RS for Rhino script. We'll see what that does in a minute. But basically, um, this imports the library, and we can reference it by using uh, RS. How do we do that? Well, we can say rs dot, because now we're accessing a library. And you can see this pops up, too. Uh, add point. OK. And whenever you uh, add the parentheses here to start accessing that function, you get the little help function that pops up here. And it's going to say add point, and the parameters are you know the XYZ location um, of the point to add. Uh, and it returns the GI, the GOID, that's the geometric ID for the object. We'll mess with that later. But in order to add a point, you need to have an XYZ location. Well, fortunately, in, in Rhino, it's pretty easy to do that. Uh, you can do a list as a variable simply by doing brackets. It's kind of like an array, like a one-dimensional array, if you're familiar with that. So we can add a point at 000 really easily by putting it in brackets. And you see it closes and putting it back in parentheses. And then if we run the script again, you can see that we get our point in Rhino. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and erase that for now. Um, we can add some variables here. We can say like, uh, in in this case, well, let's do let's do point x. Point x equals zero. Oops, <laughs> force a habit there. Don't need the uh, uh, the punctuation. Point y equals ten. Let's see equals zero. So we can we can have these variables and then we can insert them into our list. And uh, we'll get a point that's at zero ten zero. And you can see that in fact it is. There it is up there at ten. So it's you know we can get a kind of a parametric object now. Now if I go in I can change change some variables here. I could get that point to move diagonally. Let's go ahead and add. We can say like uh, we can add a comment here. We can say if we put in a uh, little hash here, little uh, number sign. We can say um, these variables control the point. And this little green text, you know, doesn't run. It doesn't it doesn't do anything. It's just a nice little reminder of uh, what the script is doing. And it's nice to kind of have the variable somewhere that you can access them really easily, and and you can change them, and that's going to affect this point. The other thing you could do is uh, you could actually set that as a uh, list. So you can say, uh, let's call this uh, coordinate list. And you could actually do something where you create a list. Uh, and so I can, I can make a list, call it coordinate list, and I can plug it in for that series of numbers. And, uh, you know, these don't really matter. Actually, i got to delete this too before. I get confused. And I got a point. Up here, at 15. Okay. So I can make a list, and I can feed that in as the XYZ for the uh, add point. So there's lots of ways to do it. Python is really, like, flexible. I mean, I could go back 
And I could do something like, uh, you know, this is going to be point y. So I've made a dependency between this variable and this list, which I'm using uh, to fulfill the add point function. So the purpose of this is just to say there's a lot of flexibility in the way that you address variables. Um, and it's really important to understand, you know, what your function wants. Again, one way to do that really quickly is when you add the first parentheses, the output's going to give you that. The other way to do it is to press F1 when you're inside the uh, Python editor. And then you can just find that you know, add point. And that's going to give you a more verbose description uh, of that syntax here. So that's pretty useful. Okay. You can, um, there's other ways of accessing some of the parameters, but I just like to say, I just like to give it a point uh, value. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty straightforward. Another thing that we can do is um, we can make these variables themselves. So I can say uh, point one equals uh, add point. Uh, you know, let's just call it zero zero zero. Oops, what's this bracket here? It's important that the brackets are there because we want to give this a list uh, that tells us what the point is. And we can do point two equals rs dot add point. Well, let's just do this at <clears throat> 10, 10, 0. So like a diagonal. You can run this. You can see the two points. OK. And notice, you know, it didn't crash or anything like that. But what we've done is that we've assigned the variable point one to be a point object. When Rhino uh, asks for a point 3D, that's what we, we just gave this uh, point one. That's a point 3D object. And this is a point 3D object. And what can you do with that? Well, you can go in and you can make a line. I can say rs add line. And if you don't know what the syntax is, just think about the command that you're going to be using in Rhino and then look for it in the index of the, uh, of the help file or the contents, you know, and um, you can basically find, you can find a line, you can say, you know, add line, or you can search for a line, that works too. Yeah, actually, you can go in here, there's all kinds of commands you can find, so you can say add line, and I can find add line. Okay, so add line. What does add line want? Add line wants a start and an end, and actually, we should go back, if I look at add line. Uh, it wants a point 3D or a list of three numbers. Well, we saw how to get a list of three numbers in there, but we haven't looked at what a point 3D object is. Well, that's what these objects are. So we can say the starting of the line is point 0.1 and the end of it is point 0.2. And if you run this, it should generate a line between those two points. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So you can control these with variables and then you can, you can control where the line is. Now, you'd say, Nick, well, I don't want to always make like points, you know, I, I just want the line. I want to I want to store the idea of the point, but I don't want to necessarily add a point. Well, then you can just store these as uh, lists. Then you don't draw the point. So now they're not point 3D objects. So I've got these two lists. I'm gonna delete this. Then the end result is just the line, but it, so the points are just the variables now. They don't actually get drawn as points because I didn't use add point, but I could still make the line because I had two lists of uh, three coordinates. So you can, and then you can do things with that. So if I've actually got this, I can call this line one, and now I've got the 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 GUID of this stored once I run this command again. And once I have the GUID, I can do things like transform it. So I can say uh, RS move object. And it wants an object ID and a translation. So the object ID is line one. And the translation, well, the translation is probably is a vector. And that vector is going to be a, another series of coordinates. So I could say, I want to move that line 10 in the y direction. So if I run this again, it's going to do this. And then it's going to move that line up. See, and then moved it up. And you can see that these run sequentially. So the data gets stored, the line gets created, and then the line gets moved. It runs from the top to the bottom. That's a script. Okay. So uh, for your homework, what I want you guys to do is examine some of the commands in the uh, software. Like, you know, 
yeah, how do you create a, a, a box? Uh, yeah, yeah, how do you create a circle, an arc? Um, and experiment with creating um, basically parametric forms uh, by setting up some variables here that then control the construction uh, of the form. I would go with uh, points uh, as the objects that you control. Uh, and just try to do something, like make the first letter of your name, or try to draw a, a house, but, but try to draw it using a rhino script uh, as a way of understanding how the uh, syntax works with variables and how to access the rhino commands, okay? And uh, again, so just, just get comfortable with this, and uh, we'll pick up from there next time.